Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Saktivel. Today we will see uh, how we can implement the data provider in the framework. Again guys, if you are new and directly watching this video, you might not be aware of how, uh, what is data provider, what is it written type and all the little stuff. So I would request you to watch the last two previous videos to understand what's happening here. Again, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, today's agenda is going to be, uh, first we will do a dry run with, with JSON as the config file. I'm going to not develop uh, more on this with the, with the JSON file. We'll have a property file as our configuration file in our framework. If, if someone wants to use JSON, they, they can use JSON, okay? But we'll still have the capability to use JSON as a config file in our framework. We'll also, we'll also see some of the parameters that the data provider has, like a parallel equal to true. What is this attribute can bring uh, in uh, to the table so we will we will see that in detail and we'll also see whether we can control uh, and da data provider threat count again if you might not be aware of this but uh, we will see that in a few minutes and we'll also see how we can implement the data provider uh, in the in the selenium automation framework that we have developed so far again guys if you're directly coming to this channel i request you to watch the previous videos uh, yes without wasting much time let's get to the workspace right so Good. So this is the uh, this is the framework that we have developed so far. And if you notice, uh, uh, this is the configuration file that I have developed now. So it's just a URL and with this particular value, and it's also having browser as Firefox. But for now, we are not using this. We're going to only use this URL, right? That's what we have even in our property files, right? So, so the final uh, look, uh, you know, it will be looking like this: the JSON utils where we are uh, reading the JSON and storing it in a map hash map uh, you know uh, uh, in the static block right you know we have already saw what is static block why we need to use static block and other stuff and we also have a static method where we can uh, pass the uh, enum of config properties and we can get the value of from that okay so this is what it is and if you also notice i have also mentioned the path here so the path of the json is mentioned here so uh, everything is fine. So the only change that we need to do instead of property utils, we just need to call JSON utils. That's as simple as that. Just import the package. Then let's try to run this whole thing and then check whether everything is working fine. Hopefully it should not have any issues. Again, if you're feeling this video is a little slow, please change the playback settings to 1.5 or 2 guys so that you don't feel any slowness. I think uh, there was some problem uh, with, the, with the website itself. I think it's it's not loading actually. Internal error record. I think it might be down. Okay. I think it's up now. Okay. Okay. Now the script is still executing. Okay. Maybe it, it may be a, a issue with the with the uh, application. So so whatever we want to achieve, we already achieved. So let me revert to property utils. Right. That's what we originally had. So good. Now let's get back to the orange HRM test that we have created so far and we'll try to implement the data provider. Okay, I am creating a public, uh, maybe this returning object array, maybe one dimensional or two dimensional, depending upon your requirement. And okay, let me annotate this with data provider, that's very important. Okay, and I also can mention uh, in the test method what is the data provider. So, okay, name. Again, guys, if you have, haven't used any name attribute, maybe we'll use a name attribute here, okay? The name is, say, a login test data provider, something like this, okay? If you, if you don't want to use the default name of the method name, then you can use like this. Let's try to use that. Okay, that's it. I don't want to do anything, add a return statement for now, okay? But actually, I want to return a two-dimensional object array so instead of what I can do, I, instead of hard coding this value, I want to feed it from uh, my test method. So there is a case where I want to do login uh, to an application, the HRM application with a different set of test data, maybe like 50 set of test data. How can I do that? So what are we going to do? String username. For now, for now, I'm not using map for simplicity reason. Uh, the purpose of uh, creating this video is to explain about the parallel equal true attribute and dead, uh, data provided thread count. So, so uh, I'm not going to use map, but yeah, we can change this to map as well. Okay, return new uh, two-dimensional object array. Okay, and each one of them is going to hold a set of data. Okay, the first set of data you can provide here. Okay, the first set of data is actually the 
valid data okay admin one two three and the second set of data is uh, maybe one two three uh, and anyways the script will fail because this is not application owned by me so obviously the script will fail uh, stating its invalid credentials so we are not worried about that for now but only thing that we want to achieve is whether it is running uh, two times okay okay everything is set i think uh, it should run two times okay let's just check ah, okay i didn't do the important change we need to actually pass the variable uh, instead of for coding it here okay good I I can run my test page dot XML. Okay. Good. Uh, if you notice, one of the Chrome browser launch. Okay, it's entering the username password. It's getting logged in. Okay, it's absolutely working fine. And there may be case uh, the second one may fail because this is not an actual cred valid credential, so it may throw some invalid credentials error. Yeah, it it throwed that error. And, and we should wait for the Chrome browser to close in the after method. Good. Uh, I think it, it got closed. We got the result two ran, one pass, one fail. That's good. But I suppose consider I have, uh, you know, I want to run this particular thing in parallel. Okay. So if you even go here, okay, even if you go to thread count and then if you change it to this to two, it will not work because it will only run the methods in parallel. Again, the data provider, it will not count. So what I can do in this case, okay? I just have one method. I want to run this whole thing in parallel. How can I do that? Then there is an attribute here. So you can tell parallel equal to true, which means whatever the data, whatever the set of data, the data provider going to return, it will return in parallel. So these two data, these two data sets will be written in parallel. So let's see, notice, just notice, we have just the thread count as one here, okay? We didn't do anything here. And let's try to run the testng.xml now, but hopefully this time two, two should be running, okay? Okay, if you notice two Chrome browsers got launched, okay? So one will pass, one will fail, okay? That doesn't matter, we are not interested about it, but for now uh, we have two browsers open and then execution is carrying on. But imagine I want to run 50 tests in parallel, okay? Something like this. But for now, I just limit to four. Uh, consider you, you want to run 50 test cases, okay? You can't run it one by one. Again, if you put parallel equal to true, okay, all the 50 test cases will be ran in parallel. If I open 50 browsers, see my, my laptop is having four GB RAM, it cannot, it cannot handle 50. So I cannot even uh, make it false because by default it will be false. So I, it will run one by one. Is there any way where I can control the you know number of threads uh, that my data provider can you know feed it in parallel? Okay, how can I do that? So you can just go here in your suit level, just add this particular parameter data hyphen provider hyphen thread hyphen count, and then you can mention even though I I try to return uh, four in parallel but don't run four in parallel, just run three in parallel. That's what it is. This, this particular attribute will help to achieve that. Let's try to run this now. And we should notice only three should run in parallel instead of four. Even though we have four set data sets, okay? Three should run in parallel, okay? Yes, we have got three Chrome browsers open and both all the three are running. Okay, pass or fail doesn't matter. It all depends upon your your uh, credentials. Anyway, only these two are valid credentials. So now the another test got picked up. Okay, the, the, so so this way we can even control uh, the number of uh, uh, threads that uh, that your data provider can maximum give. Okay, so this is all I want to cover for today. If we have anything else, again, we have done this, we have done this. Okay, we have also see how we can control the data provider that account. Yes, we have done the parallel, uh, par you know, uh, we have implemented data provider to run the same test with multiple set of test data in parallel. We have done everything. I think we have done for the day. Uh, we'll see in another interesting video. If you're new here, please do subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you all for watching.